Uh, I've been seeing some of this as well, what you just posed, because I saw thumbnails floating around. I've been wearing this, the Ultra Watch, and it's got this like flat edge on the side, this titanium piece. And so I've seen the images floating around of an iPhone rocking a very similar design characteristic with the with the flat edge mm. and also people titling it ultra there was a rumor prior to the last event that they would be done with this pro max thing and they announced the watch first at which point we were all like oh going with ultra are we maybe the phone goes ultra now too but it didn't it stayed with the pro max which was a curious mm. decision but obviously, plenty of speculation here that iPhone 15 could be the one to go ultra as they get rid of this confusing Pro Max thing, which honestly, I've never liked Pro Max, not even from the jump. It was just too much going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember talking back then about possibility of Pro Plus, but then you've just got extra words. So you got to keep, if you're trying to be efficient. It's very spitty too with the puzz. The, the 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 plos the plosives they're called yeah. plosives yeah. and because I have this pop filter the plosives are not as painful painful Peter okay we're not doing Peter a Piper test here picked some pickles I don't remember but yeah it, 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 listen you just if you don't have to say extra words in order to imply quickly the the model I'm all for it. Even though some people, many people will say, oh, you're copying Samsung, this and that. I don't know if there's another word uh, other than Ultra that, that you can land on. But we've seen a lot of other smartphone makers kind of lean into these types of words. Mm. Um, you have to have basically four phones. That's what they have right now. They have the iPhone 14. They have the 14 Plus, the 14 Pro, and then the 14 Pro Max. What, what my question is, what happens to the Pro if you introduce an Ultra? Or do you trim the line completely? Because right now, they're essentially the same phone, the Pro and the Pro Max, other than obviously the battery and the display size. So maybe the whole thing gets an overhaul so it's easier to follow. Because mm -hmm. some of them are Plus, some of them are Max, some of them are Pro. It's just not the most immediately apparent. Now, I know in Samsung world, they do S22, and then they got a Plus, and then they got an Ultra. Am I mm -hmm. correct on this? Mm -hmm. So it's just regular Plus Ultra. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we end up seeing. Regular Plus Ultra. I don't know. They go full Samsung on it. I think some people would be upset with that, though, because a lot of people like the regular size Pro model. Uh, either way, I'm for changing the name as well. Mm. I I don't think we need another product in the line. I don't think you need to have, like, if it's an introduction of an Ultra and you keep the Pro and Pro Max, that's getting a little bit much here. Mm -hmm. Getting confused here. But if it replaces the top-end model, and even if they keep everything else the same, I think I'd be a fan of it, and I wouldn't. I'm not the type to get angry about the fact that the other brand had it before they did. But if you could find another word other than ultra, that'd be fine too. What are the other words? Let's do a quick thesaurus and figure out what our other options are for ultra. I know ultra is extremist, radical, fanatic. Oof. Okay. These are a bit much. Exceedingly, all out. Um, extreme, excessive. <laughs> Whoa. Mm. That's interesting. You see, we like Ultra. We like Ultra. But in reality, it's a pretty intense word. Um, it's fitting, though. Because if it's the best of the best, it makes sense that it's an Ultra. No, I, I realize that. But look at the synonyms right now. Look at those synonyms, Will. Like, there's other words that aren't, that would have synonyms. Like, let's say we said uh, amazing. Synonyms for amazing, astonishing, astounding, surprising. There's just, you, do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah, but too many syllables. 
You know what I mean? I don't want it to be called amazing either. Okay, it's just good. funny how the the associations of these words they 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 feel more commercial. Like ultra feels more premium or expensive, so I want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What about prime? Yeah, you could do prime. That's cool. Huh? You could do prime, but Amazon's all over that word. Yeah, that's they're all over oh. that word. Top, best, iPhone best. Top. <laughs> best. <laughs> well, that'd be Very amazing. Obvious. That'd be amazing. You go in the store. Which model do you want? The best uh, iPhone best, please. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Will. This is tough. What do they do in cars with different trim levels? They get crazy with the naming as well. Like, I remember when you were ordering Broncos, you were like, Badlands Edition 42. But they don't have, like, names that topple other names. They're just kind they of do. names. No, no, they do. Like what? Like Limited. It would go, uh. like, with the trucks, for example, F-150. It goes, like, you have Lariat. And then you have platinum, and then you have yeah. limited. The words keep getting more intense. <laughs> Not for Broncos. For I specific. disagree. The Raptor? Oh, you're talking about, um, well, the Raptor is another class in, in a uh, way. Sure. But the, the base Broncos, like the outer Ford Bronco and trim levels. Yeah, Bad but those Badlands. Badlands, you can tell, is better. Black Diamond. Yeah, you can tell it's better. That one's not better, oh, actually. Okay. All right. Well, it should be better. In oh, terms of price. Which one's the best other than the uh, Raptors, the Wild Track? Wild Track and Badlands. They're neck and neck. Yeah. So uh, it's funny. These are all trademarked, by the way. I'm just looking at this right now. But base, they're all great names. Base, Big Bend, yeah. Black Diamond, Outer Banks, Badlands, Wild Track. But that, see, the thing is here. They're all pretty good. Yeah, but th this is not. None of them are obviously better. They just have different purposes, right? Like take, for example, Tesla, you have the performance edition. It's super obvious it's better than the other one. Mm -hmm. That's usually how it goes over here. Yes. So I would say this is the, this is the more uh, unlikely sure. in automotive that you would, but the Bronco is such like a customizable, um, you know, it's just different from the rest yeah, of the market yeah, yeah. In, a, okay, in a way. Yeah. But anyway, we're all over the place here. What do they do with the laptops? The laptops, they just do, you know what? Forget, what if you they're just both pro and one of them is the pro 6.8 and one of them is the pro 6.4? Just like it is with the laptops, right? Like yeah. this is a MacBook Pro 16, which, which, and you have a MacBook Pro 14. Mm-hmm. It's far less exciting, but I like how surgical it is. It's just like, I want the pro of this size, or I want the pro of that size. Pro small, pro big. Pro portable, pro powerful. I don't know what we're doing here, Will. Um, Hell of a top story. You got but there. then you got these sizes, and it gets confusing with the iPhone 14 regular. You know <laughs> and that's I mean? why we have to say regular. And I've done this in videos before. I'm like, why do I have to keep calling these things regular? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is neither here nor there, Will. What, what can we really do? We can't... We would be lamenting. We'd be... We'd have a whiteboard. We'd be like, ah! Plus, you got to sell them at the end of the day. And if the word ultra sells products, then then so be it. Everything's going to be ultra, yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, always on display, battery drain tested. Let me just say something to you. I've been using the uh, Pro Max, by the way. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's in my pocket. I told you I was going to use it. I thought you were going to use just the Pro. I thought, because I was coming off the folding one. Remember, we had a conversation back there. Oh, yeah, right. And I said, that's the biggest phone you can put in your pocket, and most people put in their pocket. And I was like, which one is the more fair comparison, to go all the way down to the to the regular Pro or to compare it to the Pro Max? And I'm talking about the Z Fold 4, which was the phone I had previously. And I thought that this comparison was better. To use sure. the Pro Max. Makes sense. Anyway, amazing battery life. That's my favorite part so far. Okay. Has good battery life. I'm not charging it all that Do you frequently. have always on display? What? Yeah, the display is on. It's just, it's. I don't even have a lot of the fancy stuff this person has on there always on display. I just, it's just the time for me. That's all I really care about. I don't want all, all these other gadgets on there. But 
I don't, you know me, I was never, it was, Mo saw it and he's like, oh, I need that. And you loved Always On. I don't really care about it that much. Okay. For me. I, I like, obviously I like having a 120 hertz OLED display that can go all the way down to one hertz for power saving and so forth. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so they, I guess they did a test here on the Pro model, not the Pro Max, Always On Display battery drain measured over, over an eight hour interval. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The phone was without an active SIM card during the duration of the test. And it was not used at all during the test. It had one social media app active, I guess, in the background. Measured battery consumption during two days. One day the phone had an always-on function enabled. The next day it was turned off. So we're going to figure out exactly how much extra battery it utilizes. Uh, 6%. Hmm. Interesting. Does that change your opinion of always on at all? Do you do you feel like six percent is a is a sacrifice you're willing to make? Absolutely. Interesting. Maybe even ten percent. Ten percent battery. Yeah, I would go ten percent. Would you go fifteen? Fifteen. Uh, yeah. So you can just see the time just as a clock and notifications. I think fifteen percent is the cutoff point. And and you like I was said, hoping it'd be more like one or two. I'm I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah. Because and I think sure. it's and I think it's because I the utility for me is not as high. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is in my pocket. The vast is it very rarely on a surface. Right. It lives in my pocket. So this six percent actually makes me consider not turn, having it. Yeah, turn it off if you don't need it. Um, the only reason why I say fifteen percent just to justify is that like you said the iphone has good battery life and i would do it for on an iphone for the record I mean? for the record some people are complaining that the battery life is not quite as good as it was on the previous generation d oh, really but the the max model already had amazing battery life but some people are suggesting that the they're a little bit less impressed with the regular pro model right, right. so that's worth noting as well but Anyway, it's over an eight-hour period, 6% drain over an eight-hour period. I think a lot of people are like you, and they, they, they're going to enjoy having the feature. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, it's even since I've had it on, on Android, it just hasn't been a thing that I've really cared about all that much. That's just me. It's a personal thing. I'm sure there's something I care about that everyone else is like, you're crazy, who cares? And then I would care about that. So it's very personal. So are you going to turn it off? Knowing that it's 6% battery drain in eight hours? Well, I just realized something. That's the Pro model. I wonder about the Pro Max. It might be a little less, might mm. be a little more. Okay. Who knows? Because you have a bigger battery to begin with. Maybe it's a smaller percentage, but then you have a bigger display. It's all very interesting. Yeah. Netflix is building its own game studio. Man, Netflix doing whatever right now. Netflix is sitting there saying, what in the hell is going on? They have a ton of money, and they're just throwing stuff at the wall. See what sticks. Well, and, and there's this seems to be this looming threat of everybody leaving all at once. Mm. Like I think I feel like I saw a trending topic on Twitter the other day. Mm. It's like like leave Netflix or something. Like you're waiting for some scandal. You're waiting for some moment. You're waiting for some price increase to hit some critical thing. You're waiting for some economic situation um, at the macro scale that causes everyone to immediately look at their subscriptions and be like, I don't watch Netflix. And like it's, It feels like you're waiting for the pin to drop mm. with Netflix. Mm. And maybe, maybe it's because we do this show and I'm constantly reading these stories or maybe it's because I'm hearing less about it or maybe it's because I keep switching devices and I'm not even logging into Netflix. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not even a primary thing for me. I don't I don't know if it... I really don't know what has happened with Netflix, to be honest with you. I really don't know. Has everything else become more compelling? Or has Netflix dropped the ball in terms of hitting me with must-see stuff that makes me put everything down and go, I got to load up Netflix? I mean, you can speak. I, don't, I, I think it's... Uh price for a lot of people that really changed things 
Yeah, I see. So that's the thing. Is it's a again case by case basis. I'm sure there's some show in there that some person's really not willing to give up. But there was a time where Netflix was the spot in streaming. I remember seeing some uh, data recently about how YouTube actually surpassed Netflix for total time watched, which obviously Netflix had the binge thing going on, a longer typical viewing session, but it also costs money and YouTube doesn't. You can watch ads and then. Netflix was like, well, we'll put ads too, so then everybody can watch, or you can watch at a lower tier, whatever it might be. But they are seemingly rapidly considering all options for continuing to grow and exist, and that includes games. Netflix is no longer relying exclusively on third-party teams to bolster its game catalog. The streaming giant is forming an in-house game studio in Helsinki, Finland, to create world-class original games without ads or in-app purchases. While it's too soon for details in the games themselves, Zynga and EA alumnus Marco Lastica will serve as director. So games are a thing that people will seem to be willing to change plans for, willing to pay for, willing to chase around from service to service because when i i don't play very many games right now but i recall every single time it'd be like i got to get the launcher for that game company and i'm trying to play battlefield or i'm trying to play star Wars. i need the origin i gotta have uh steam and i gotta have uh give me the other one that i have to have epic i gotta have epic don't i have to have what do i have to have for when i'm trying to play uh, the Blizzard app. Blizzard, Blizzard, Blizzard. You see what I yeah, mean? And sure. people are willing to go through a couple extra hoops, and they're willing to potentially pay bigger fees for subscription or something like that if they see a game on the other end of it, and, and it, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes a a critical title for them. It, it's just a different profit margin, different strategy because games are expensive. It's a commitment if you get a game mm. that you're going to spend a number of hours inside of it. And as everything else has become, like we already talked about many times on this show, Microsoft went out and spent money in gaming. Mm -hmm. Sony went out and spent money in gaming. Amazon spending money in gaming. What, what's the game they, did, they were doing? Were we just talking about it? Amazon Studios? Some uh, really crazy RPG Spent a lot of money. So everyone's considering this. Everybody needs to be where the people are, needs to be where the people are for extended hours. Mm -hmm. And gaming is it's an avenue to get there. I don't know how Netflix, in, uh, I don't know how Netflix does in this area because it's also one of the most difficult places to succeed. Mm -hmm. Managing a development team and such. And all you hear is about... Uh, how tough that is mm -hmm. and the, the long hours and the so, so, criticisms and um i mean it just sounds like a like a pretty heated environment the game making environment a lot a lot of studios have trouble turning profits or long hours uh, yeah i mean they, they got the film business you get the content business and then you got the game business seems like you're ratchet up another level Mm -hmm. Well, I heard the games were good. I played um, the Stranger Game, Stranger Things one, the video game uh -huh. on my phone. It's fun. Oh, yeah. So hopefully, Thumb two uh, thumbs up. Good luck with that. You know, I think this. I think the stuff they're talking about here is bigger budget mm. type type uh, games. You won't see the first fruits of the internal studio for years. Netflix says years. Still, this and recent acquisitions show how the company's gaming strategy is evolving. Netflix initially depended on outsider games, including slightly tweaked versions of existing titles. This increasingly focused on truly unique projects you won't find elsewhere. Exclusives is what some people might call it, Will. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure you're, you've heard of these things. Yeah. The 11 biggest announcements at Amazon's hardware launch event. I even know they had one. I kind of recall, actually, in the past, but... Who knows when this, whenever they're doing it. I probably got invited to one of these things at some point in time. Mm. I guess they feel they have enough products to have their own events at this point. Yeah. They're okay. 
<laughs> the ki- the new Kindle Scribe, which is kind of like remarkable. Uh, remarkable. Yeah. So it's an, an e-ink, e-ink tablet. But you can draw on it. Kindles aren't just for reading anymore. The newest Kindle is an e-ink tablet that you can use for reading and writing. It comes with a 10.2-inch screen with 300 PPI along with a basic pen or premium pen option. I don't mind it. You're mad about that? No. I just think that their products are very much um, in line with uh, like important use for people. Like this e-ink display. It's nothing flashy or anything like that. You know, you get your Echo Dots and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm going to pick one of these up, Will. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to pick one of these up. You know, I've been writing a little bit more. Some poetry? No, just taking notes and things. Okay. Uh, I think Mom would like that. The writing? we were yeah, ta- Him and I were talking about the other day. A lot of notepads. We were talking about how just the action of writing. Now, granted... Yeah. The technology you're replacing is pretty simple and inexpensive, and yeah. there, and then and then people who are into writing also get into pens and they get into paper and they get into like it, part of it is that enthusiasm. Mm. Don't you know anybody that's into pens and paper or pencils? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's people they, 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 Le- uh, writing letters. You know, but I'm talking the actual stationery that they like a certain brand or a certain. Mm. Do you understand where I'm going? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll give this. A, I'll give a. Cra- I'll give the scribe a crack. Fifth gen Echo Dot speakers have new sensors and better audio. That's starting to look more like. They look ha- nice, eh? Google speaker sort of looks like that. No? Yeah, with but, the uh, light. Well, the clock is nice. Yeah. Then you can turn off your always on display. Mm-hmm. Not use your battery life six percent over eight hours because mm. you just look at this instead. You can also use the Echo speakers as Wi-Fi extenders, along with two new Echo Dot speakers. Amazon announced that you'll be able to use the devices as Wi-Fi extenders for your Eero Mesh Wi-Fi network. That's right, because Amazon bought Eero. Mm. Did they buy Eero? They did, didn't they? Yeah. While the ability is coming with the new Echo speakers Amazon announced above, it's also coming to fourth-gen Echo speakers on October 20th, as well as fourth-gen Echo Dot devices in the coming months. Hmm. Echo Auto. Wow. Don't I, I'm already talking to my car, though. I don't think I need this microphone because my phone's already listening. The car is listening in most cases. But a- Amazon needs to listen. I guess Amazon needs to listen, don't they? I guess Jeff needs in there, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Amazon showed off the new Echo Auto, a device it hasn't updated since 2018. Like its predecessor, Echo Auto puts Alexa in your car, giving you hands-free control of your car's audio system, Bluetooth-connected calls, and more. Fifty-four ninety-nine. All right, so it's not super pricey, I guess... If your car had nothing like it, mm. it had nothing, uh, no no voice capabilities, but most people's phones at least do. Yeah. Even though some BMW cars already support Alexa, BMW is now taking the voice assistance tech to build its own system through Amazon Alexa's custom assistant program. BMW plans on rolling out its own assistant to cars sometime in the next two years. Mm. A sleep tracking bedside light called Halo Rise. Ooh, Will, you like this? Mm-hmm. You're into the sleeping. Yeah, I, I like the I like this. I've seen variations of this before, where it's mm. like a rising sun, and mm. then it would kind of like the the light would dim or or turn brighter. Yeah, Phillips did that, but this one is looking at you to tell you how well you slept. Are well, you okay with that? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. Wow, you place it on your nightstand. It tracks your sleep using sensors for movement and breathing and it's supposed to tell you how well you slept. You can also use it as an alarm clock. It wakes you up with lights and sound. I don't know, Will, but it is $140. Yeah. See, the thing about sleep tracking, one of the big issues is wearing things. Like wearing devices mm. is annoying when you're trying to do the sleep tracking. I don't want to I don't want anything right when yeah. I'm sleeping. So I had the Withings one. It goes under the mattress, so you don't even look at it. Mm-hmm. You can just look at your sleep data if you choose to, but you're never reminded of the fact that that's what you're doing. And when it comes to smart watches and things, a lot of times you're taking it off, putting on the charger anyway. Yep. So you have this like more permanent sleep tracking hardware. But the way that this thing is kind of looking at you, uh, looks I don't know. Like, it looks like an eye. Yeah, you, I don't know. Yeah? I don't know what 
I don't know how. It's Bezos is I don't like know it. which sensors are in there and how they're determining it when you're tossing and turning. But you you've been tossing and turning lately, haven't you? Huh? And as far as your sleep is concerned, you haven't been uh, having. How do you the, know that? <laughs> you haven't been having the best sleep. Um. No, I have. Oh, okay. Have. Okay. Usually, fall is pretty good. Oh, okay. Fall. Crack, Interesting. Yeah, I cracked the window open a little bit. No, but you were having the te- you were having the temperature issues you were talking about. Hmm? You were saying it was too hot. You're looking at oh, blankets. Oh, yeah. That's, and... that's a whole blanket issue that I need to figure out. But yeah, I, I think uh, the window helps. Okay. With the breeze at night. No, no, I'm all for it. You know? I'm all for it. Yeah. I just remember you talking about all these problems. I know. I'm still working Now on you're it. downplaying Finding it. Like, it's it. as if it's not a big problem, but... It Let's was... not go there. Here. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. not We're not. Gonna... If anyone has like a good blanket they recommend... So you do want to go there. Cool sleepers. So we are going there. Or hot sleepers. Just uh, hit me up, let me know. <laughs> cool sleepers or hot sleepers. Uh, hot sleepers. This Sorry. is interesting yeah. stuff right here. This is, uh, this is gold. This is must-see TV. This is what Netflix so, needs. They want to keep the subscriptions. Yeah. Whatever adventures Willie do it gets himself into trying to find the right blanket so he can finally get some sleep, but then he can tell me he has no problem sleeping moments later after we had the discussion. There's more yeah. to this. I feel like there's millions more. Millions upon millions of views. I feel like there's more to the story here, and I think that people would love a thorough investigation into what's really going on. Okay, okay. We'll figure it out. Be like... Uh, what is it? Uh, Part two dropping next week. It would be like one of those yeah. true crime podcasts. Yeah. We find out a little bit more each week. Like, why didn't he want to talk about it? What could have been wrong with him talking about it? We need a theme song. Something dramatic. And then they'd be like, why does he need? What's wrong with his blanket? What's wrong with a regular blanket? What's he trying to hide? What's he really doing at night? Mm. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm, just, I'm just trying to create some drama to keep mm. people subscribed to Netflix. You understand? Yeah. They got shareholders, all right? Okay. New Fire TV Cube lets you control your cable box with your voice. Man, they just, they're just, it's like we got 50 new microphones for you. Yeah. And very at home stuff. <laughs> yeah. We got 50 new microphones for you. A pair of high end 4K Fire TVs. Look Ooh. at that. That's not bad, eh? No bezel. You know what I like? How it's Seattle versus Toronto on the baseball game. Oh, there. yeah, yeah. Well, Seattle is obvious because they're Amazon, but they picked Toronto, which is cool because we happen to be there right now. So, yeah. And also the Jays have been playing pretty well, and they're going to be in the wild card here pretty soon. Right on. So I don't know if you're going to go in the playoffs. So you're going to go see the game in the playoffs. Sure. Yeah. I'll have you been getting you. those emails? No, I haven't. I just, I literally just got an email. They keep, they're trying to sell me the playoff tickets right now they're like get your playoff ticket and they put the fire emoji in the subject line because you like to spend the big money there right so they're like mm, they know i'm guy. gonna buy these yeah. tickets yeah i guess so i but i feel like actually in terms of total number of games i've mm-hmm. been to fewer like um right. mo and kirk have been all over it yeah especially kirk that. was just there like a night ago yeah so i'm actually trailing when it comes to that Mm-hmm. In addition to the new Fire TV Cube, Amazon also took the wraps off two new Fire TV Omni QLED TVs coming with ambient light sensors, dim the display when no one's around. 65 inch starts at 799, 75 inch, 1099. But obviously, I'm looking at this, and the coolest part is the fact that there's almost no bezel at all mm-hmm. other than on the bottom. So that's that's a pretty clean looking display right there. Camera is probably at the bottom here. As far as I can tell. Camera, microphone, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, obviously. That's right. Jeff. Jeff's on the other side of each one of these things. Pan and tilt mount for Blink Mini. Amazon introduced a way to transform your current... I don't even know what Blink Mini is at this point. Is this a security camera? Uh, I Must think be. it's like a streaming camera. Simply place the camera atop the new mini pan tilt mount, set it on a table or mantle, and then remotely look around the room from the Blink app. It's got to be a security oh, thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it costs 29 and the camera's 59 so that's pretty affordable. And now all of a sudden you're on the remote just looking around the space. Like, mm-hmm. what's going on? Checking up on your pet. I don't know. Yeah. Ring Spotlight Pro is a more advanced cam with wireless option. Getting power from the sun, Will likes that. Man, they have so many brands. I just realized yep. under the umbrella that they've acquired recently. Mm. Uh, Ring and earlier we were talking about Eero and they're going to have a whole, they got a whole ecosystem going on here. 
It is interesting. Stuff. Some of the brands, they maintain the names, though, and they don't switch them over to Amazon. Like, they could call all these things Amazon if they wanted, but they yeah. don't. Do they have a RoboVac as well? Not that I know of. Oh, okay. Why, well, you think they bought, like... What was the original RoboVac company? I can't even remember at this iRobot? point. iRobot? Yeah, iRobot. Do you think they bought them? Um... I don't think so. No. Maybe. No, I don't think so. Maybe maybe next. Uh, maybe that's the next thing they need, Will. Since you're since you're already spending Jeff's money here. Mm -hmm. Wait. Scroll down a little further. A a Astro Robot. Yeah. They're building this uh No, that's not garage. a vacuum. Why can't yeah. he just be a vacuum as well? Maybe, yeah. Wow, I kind of want that thing. Can you buy that thing right now? The Astro Robot? Um That'd Maybe. be pretty cool in here. Yeah. Dri driving around in here? Yeah. Click on it. See what happens. Helping help out? We buy that thing? Uh, I don't know. Look, it can fit a drink. It has a drink holder in it. Uh huh. It'll bring you something to drink, Will. We're going to look into that for you guys. Maybe this is the future here of a uh, sure. future unboxing video. Yeah. Today's episode sponsored by Stitch Fix. Discovering styles you love just got easier. You didn't even know what styles you love. You got to try some things on, Will, to figure out. You're like, oh, look at that. I can pull that off. And that's what happens over here with Stitch Fix. You tell them about your style as it is today. Of course, you're going to get all types of uh, inspiration as you're on the site. Uh, they're going to do the shopping for you. And all of a sudden, you're going to be having a wardrobe sent to you. You're going to be having items sent to you. And that might sound a little bit terrifying, but it's not. Because guess what? You only pay for what you keep. Something doesn't uh, suit you. You try it on. You're like, nah, that's not the one. You send it back. No problem. Nothing. No payment. The stuff you really like. Okay, cool. That stays in the wardrobe. And it's from brands that you know. Thousand plus brands, actually. You're talking about Nike, Adidas. I see uh, Tom's and Sperry and New Balance. These are brands. And when you mix and match and you put it together and you get to know one another all of a sudden you land on a style shop on your own in your own personalized store buy new items and complete outfits anytime their stylists will send you pieces that reflect your style fit and price points plus you'll get expert guidance it's stitch fix it's time to upgrade the wardrobe stitch fix is the easy way to get clothes that fit you without having to endlessly scroll through options and they'll show you how to wear head-to-toe outfits so you can get dressed and go right now stitch fix is offering our listeners twenty dollars off their first fix at stitchfix.com slash later that's stitchfix.com slash later for twenty dollars off today stitchfix.com slash later also sponsored by notion one workspace for every team this is about getting yourself organized, getting your team organized. This is a constant struggle and you're gonna take any advantage you can get. Build the workflow you want, customize Notion to make it work the way you want. Just drag and drop to craft the dashboard, website, doc, or system you need. You are building out a custom system for yourself and for your team that works for you. Go get some work done with Notion. Not all work collaboration tools are created equal. Some help you organize your company's information. Others allow you to manage projects together. Notion does both. It's one tool for your whole team to do it all. For companies of all sizes, Notion provides one central and customizable workspace that can be tailored to fit any team and brings all teams together to get more done and move faster. Learn more and get started for free right now at Notion.com. Take the first step toward an organized, happy team today. Go to Notion.com to get started today. Thank you to Notion. Uh, how Jeep solar powered EV chargers compare to Rivian's adventure network. Wait a second. Jeep's solar powered EV chargers. That seems slow. <laughs> I don't know. I'm slow. I just, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. But the giant solar. Wow. Power. I mean, it looks cool. I don't know why. Maybe this case, I shouldn't be skeptical. Owning a Jeep comes with the perk of being able to drive on both sides, uh, on both on and off road. Sure, but I mean, you could do that with a Rivian too. To accommodate his drivers who tend to take the road less traveled, Jeep released plans to roll out solar powered EV chargers across popular off roading trails. Okay, never mind. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Because imagine you got, just like the Grand Canyon. You have no grid over there. Yeah. 
That's very cool. Meanwhile, Rivian, a new favorite in the EV industry, uh, plans to launch its own charging network uh, for off-road enthusiasts. So they're going to compete with each other. And I guess they have a slightly different approach. Jeep revealed his first fully electric vehicle earlier this month. The automaker will release four all-electric SUVs launching in North America and Europe by 2025. Wagoneer SEV, Jeep Recon EV, Avenger, and Wrangler 4 XE. Hmm. So this is what their charger looks like. Drive on sunshine. It's a big beast of a thing with a cool blue LED. And it's got a giant giant solar panel on top. I presume there's some sort of battery in there to store some power. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's for the road less traveled. So I don't know how busy these things are supposed to get or how many vehicles they can really handle. So here are some specs for both. Okay. So Jeep currently has 18 of these chargers. Rivian has 3,500. Uh, the Jeep chargers are level two, whereas Rivian level three. The maximum output of the Jeep chargers are 3.5 kilowatt versus 200. Um, so this is just like planned. It's yeah. Not, oh, okay. So things can change. Well, sure. Quite and I also see that it looks like the Jeep chargers are not exclusive, whereas the Rivian ones are. Right. Huh. Well, it's not something that had crossed my mind. It is cool to think about. I would assume it would be difficult to get level three, 200 kilowatt plus charging off. Yeah, right. Off road. I don't know how I don't know how they're gonna achieve that. Like what if the Rivian's in front of you it just like takes the whole charge? Then what hmm. do you do? Uh never mind. They're talking about across all of North America. We're like on another topic now and we're away from off road. See it says Rivian plans to install thirty five hundred fast chargers level three across six hundred sites in North America for its adventure network. The EV startup will install chargers across off road trails, parks, and other popular routes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see exactly where those 200 kilowatt chargers find themselves and how close to the grid they actually are versus off grid. It seems the solar charger from Jeep looks really out in the middle of nowhere type situation. Yeah. So they might have a slightly different implementation. And I guess they would be standalone, right? They're not going to. I don't know. I guess they could put a few of them together, a bank of them. I, was, I mean, you could. You could, but there's probably like some maintenance involved here. And the trouble is you're so far off. You need a Jeep to go maintain these things. So you're sending a crew out there on a regular basis, check the panels, what's going on. And if you're far away from highways and things like this, this is quite the task. Yeah. But it's fun and cool nonetheless. Yeah. Good luck. Charging cars at home at night is not the way to go. A study finds. How so? If uh, the vast majority of electric vehicle owners charge a car, their car at home in the evening. Yeah, I mean, the cars have their own scheduling capabilities. A March, the research team published a paper from Stanford research team on a model they created for charging demand that can be applied to an array of populations and other factors. In the new study published September 22, they applied their model to the whole of the Western United States and examined the stress the region's electric grid will come under by 2035 from growing EV ownership. In a little over a decade, they found rapid EV growth alone could increase peak electricity demand by up to 25%, assuming a continued dominance of residential nighttime charging. To limit the high costs of all new, the, all, of all that new capacity for generating and storing electricity, the researchers say drivers should move to daytime charging at work or public charging, which could reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The finding has policy and investment implications. So they're saying because so many people are already doing it. There's going to be like an influx. Yeah, I guess they don't mean right now. I think they're saying eventually uh, people are going to have to distribute that load as opposed to everybody being charging at night. You would have uh, less demand if people had access to daytime chargers, whether that be at a public charging location or at work. It's going to act to distribute that demand. Just pad it a little bit. Or, yeah, they could also create incentives. Current time of use rates encourage consumers to switch electricity use to nighttime whenever possible. That's because that's off peak. As you know, you see on your bill and stuff. So you try to do the laundry or whatever else you're doing. Dishwasher. 
This rate structure reflects the time before significant solar and wind power supplies when demand threatened to exceed supply during the day. Today, California has excess electricity during late mornings and early afternoons, thanks mainly to its solar capacity. So this is a case-by-case -case basis as well, mm. depending on the region and how electricity is generated, stored, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it is a huge concern. Everybody's all excited about EVs, mm. but c c can we snap our fingers right now and move the entire sector over to that and 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 can the can the grid manage it will i hope so <laughs> you know no you're just the last oh, you're the last yes. one you're you topple it over <laughs> you get your ev you plug it in it's like nope like, too so much happy and then all of a sudden too much just, i plug it in it's a blackout so. too much all right, NASA. Hear about this? No, NASA's Dart spacecraft crashes head on into asteroid. Thirteen forty pound spacecraft plowed directly. What a cool clip! Wow, yep. that's legit. Yep. Dart approaching Dimorphos, shown at eight times normal speed, and then just like red crash. So the reason why NASA built this uh, spacecraft, Dart, um, it's a defense force for asteroid impact for Earth. Um, this this one actually was not headed to Earth, this asteroid, but it was kind of like a proof of concept that they can launch sort of like a missile or it looks like a satellite, and then it hits the asteroid in hopes that it kind of like changes its orbit and trajectory, Whoa. like in the long term. So you don't need to like actually shoot a missile to blow up the asteroid. You just got to change its uh, yeah. direction slightly, yeah. Yeah. get it off course. But it's interesting they're calling it a spacecraft as opposed yeah, to no like a projectile, a <laughs> yeah. right? It's like calling it a spacecraft kind of interesting. It did look like um, a satellite. NASA's first demonstration of possible planetary defense strategy appears to have gone exceptionally well with the DART spacecraft successfully impacting a non-threatening asteroid following a 10-month journey. 10 month journey mm -hmm. wow to the didymos binary asteroid system wow this you know it gets it gets super science fiction at a point yeah. but then fiction becomes reality at a point too yes if you can think it that's very cool and uh this is the ground telescope that caught the explosion Oh, wow. So that's the It satellite. looks like it's flying. That must be sped up as well. I think so. It looks like, it looks pretty speedy. That was going really quick. Yeah. Whoa. But yeah, it was completely successful. And uh, we have a defense program for asteroids now. Let's go. Humans. So there's that. Send that one up there. Uh -huh. Magnus Carlsen breaks his silence on chess cheating scandal. After weeks of innuendo, the world champion on Monday accused 19-year-old American Grandmaster of cheating. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he had just been kind of subtle about it originally, like when I was watching it on Twitter and, and so on. Mm. It was just memes or it was like, it was a kind of vague chatter. But now he's coming out and just straight up saying it. Yeah. Are you following this scandal closely? We talk about it here and there um, for like the couple of weeks that it's happening. You're and about it's you and I? Yeah. And oh, Mo, yeah. You know, okay. Sometimes. Mo's into it. Mo likes it. Yeah. He's actually really into it. Right. Um, but this is huge in chess. This, this cheating scandal. Yeah. So, no, no. I mean, definitely. It's just really interesting because it's like, it seems the entire collective of grandmasters immediately knew something was off that's the understanding i have and then there's like stuff in the butt kind of it's, it's just amazing it's, it's just amazing to me that you can be so proficient in something mm. that without evidence you can be so confident it's yeah. incredible now i don't know maybe maybe there is more evidence that i'm unaware of as well there probably is some evidence but it was just so quick and and, and it's so immediate that everybody was like, nah, I don't, don't believe this happened. I don't believe this could have happened the way it did because of how good this guy is. All types of respect there for Magnus Carlsen. He's been so dominant, right? 
he's number one right now. There you go. There you go. So people are like, I don't think this. And I saw the clip where he starts the match and then bails immediately. Yeah, the match online. World champion Magnus Carlsen on Monday broke his silence on the scandal that has shaken the chess world, explicitly accusing 19-year-old American grandmaster Hans Neiman of cheating for the first time since their controversial meeting at the Sinkfield Cup this month. In a statement posted to social media accounts, Carlsen cited Neiman's unusual progress through the chess ranks and his surprisingly re relaxed behavior when they played in St. Louis. I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over-the-board progress has been unusual. And throughout our game in the Singfield Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. So he still isn't even citing a piece of evidence. He's just saying his feeling, his intuition, which is huge coming from a, a guy like him. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not nothing at all. Neiman didn't immediately respond to a request for comment on Carlson's statement. He had earlier denied any allegations of impropriety in the overboard chess, though he confessed to cheating on two occasions in online games. That certainly doesn't help the cause, track record, and so forth. Uh -huh. Uh, Neiman chalked those up to youthful errors, but Chess.com saw fit to ban him from the platform. Mm. Chess.com this month also indicated Neiman wasn't being forthright about the breadth of his cheating, saying in a statement that it had shared, uh, shared evidence with Neiman about his ban that contradicts his statement regarding the amount and seriousness of his cheating on Chess.com. In Carlson's statement, he said he considered withdrawing from the Sinkfield Cup when Neiman was invited to participate, but he chose to play anyway. Carlson later resigned a game against Neiman in another event after making just a single move. So far, I have only been able to speak with my, my actions, and those actions have stated clearly that I'm not willing to play chess with Neiman. Poof. Uh, yeah, there's all types of theories, talking about hidden transmitters and different body places. You might hide such transmitters and Morse code and different actors in the crowd and different ways in which you could cheat. And it gets all very interesting to try to imagine. But for, listen, the Grand Masters seem fairly convinced that mm -hmm. something shady is going on and the evidence, I guess it is a piece of evidence, the past history uh, online on chess.com. It's definitely not nothing, but it would be cool to see a whole like investigation, uh -huh. documentary, Something like that, because this is, uh, I've never been more captivated by chess. It's shaken up the chess world. Yeah, I believe it has shaken up the chess world, correct. Yeah. All right, Ma last one. Last one. McDonald's teams up with streetwear label to launch adult Happy Meals. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I'm curious who the streetwear brand is. Cactus Plant Flea Market. I know nothing of the such. Okay. However, the idea of an adult Happy Meal is interesting. Everybody's playing up the nostalgia right now. Uh -huh. And they want to make you feel like a kid again. Mm. Peter Pan over there. The giant burger chain's new Happy Meal for the adults, designed by Cactus Plant Flea Market, which has also done projects with the likes of Kanye West and Pharrell Williams. It will offer a choice of food items as well as toy surprises, because that's just what adults need in 2022. More toy surprises. I don't mind it. Customers can choose between a Big Mac and 10 pieces of chicken nuggets, adding fries and a drink to make it a combo. As for toys included in the Happy Meal, well, those just sound like regular combos, except for toys and packaging, I guess. Sure, yeah. Customers can expect a Grimace. Expect Grimace, the hamburger, Hamburglar, Hamburglar. Yep. I remember that guy. Mm -hmm. Birdie or Cactus Buddy. The new Happy Meals will be available from October 3rd. Well, all the hype beast types are going to collect this stuff. Oh, yeah. Very collectible. Because of the collab. And then they're going to hang on to it or they, I don't know what they do. They, the resale market. You're going to see this stuff on StockX. Yes. You're going to see adult, limited edition adult Happy Meals on StockX. I hope you're ready for it in I 2022. Don't mind it. I hope it's you're ready for good. it. Mo, come over here for a second. Real quick. Real quick. Uh, just into the microphone. Cheating or not cheating? Not cheating. Oh, him. Oh, <laughs> no, that's Magnus. That's Magnus. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're talking story. about Neiman. Yeah. Cheating or not cheating? Then cheating. Then cheating. You're going to have to say it into the mic. 
Yeah, that looks like cheating. Oh my goodness gracious. It's amazing, isn't it? Like we don't, you know, we don't know, but we know. Isn't that weird how that works when things start to spin and turn and you don't know, but you know. Well, if he knows, you see, that's the thing. He's so well respected. If he knows and he feels confident, it gives everybody else confidence. I believe him for some reason. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it's just interesting. It's like in a court of law, let's say that this was an actual crime. Sure. I don't know that that suffices. You need, you're going to need a little bit more. Yeah, Track record, history. Evidence, you know. Matters, but you would be hard pressed. Like a jury is going to need to see some stuff. Mm -hmm. And I hope that stuff that, I've, that I, I would love to see some more of this evidence. That's all I'm sure. trying to say. I feel like there's more to the story. And that's exciting when there's more to the story. Yeah. So let's get to the bottom of it. Okay, Well, I want you to all launch right. investigative journalism on behalf of the community here at Lou later. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe we'll f we'll be filming tomorrow, so you you don't have much time, okay? All right, sure. <laughs> All right, later, everybody.